Hello everybody and welcome once again to our online content. I am Mr. Victor and today we are going to be moving on to lesson 22, beginning with page 90 and ending on page 93. We're going to talk a little bit about Earth Day. So let's dive right in. Beginning with a warning. If you don't have your book with you, go back and read your book. It's extremely important so you're not missing out on all the questions and all the talk time and on speak up. Tá? Então, se você não pegou o livro, pega lá para não ficar perdido. Tranquilinho? Let's go then. Uh, today we will see warm up, words in action, talk time, useful expressions, grammar file, speak up, listening and talking, talk time, listening, reading practice, fun time, and listening for understanding. Beginning with a question for you, the Earth Day. What is the Earth Day? Our Earth, our future. Earth Day, April 22nd. So Earth Day is a day where we stop and we take a look at how badly or how well we are protecting our dear planet, the Earth right so we have many things that we should be doing or that we uh, uh, could be doing for our planet but unfortunately we're not so this is the day where we take a step back and take a look at how we are protecting our planet okay very well let's go on to warm up and these are some of the major environmental threats to our planet so repeat after me beginning with Climate change, climate change, global warming, global warming, pollution, pollution, power plants, power plants, water pollution, water pollution, vanishing species, vanishing species, soil depletion, soil depletion and deforestation deforestation so what are uh, each of these i'm gonna say it real quick okay so pay attention uh, climate change é a mudança climática global warming é o aquecimento global pollution poluição power plants como tem ali no cantinho tá são usinas Usinas de quase todos os tipos, né? especialmente é, usinas de carvão, né? usinas é, termoelétricas. Uh, water pollution, poluição da água. Vanishing species, que são espécies que estão desaparecendo em extinção. Soil depletion, que seria a aridez do solo. We have deforestation, que é o desmatamento. É quando você tira a floresta e you're deforesting, você está desmatando. All right? Let's go on then to uh, our words in action. Então, presta atenção. Let's pay attention. Take a listen. Vamos ver words in action. Book 3. Lesson 22. Words in action. Meadow. Meadow. Repete comigo, gente. Let's go. Meadow. Field. Field. Hook. Hook. Bucket. Bucket. Twist. Twist. Reckless. Reckless. Portrait. Portrait. Dismissal. Dismissal. Stems. Stems. Suspicion. Suspicion. Suspicious. Suspicious. Clumsy. 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 Handy. Handy. Stroll. Stroll. First aid. First aid. Extension. Extension. To prompt. To prompt. Nós primeiro verbinho aí. To prompt. In the past. Prompted. Prompted. In the participle. Prompted. Prompted as well. Next verb. To stroll. To stroll in the past. Strolled. Stroll in the participle. Strolled. Strolled as well. Next. To muse. To muse in the past. Mused. Mused in the participle. Mused. Mused. Next one. 
To hang. To hang in the past. Hung. Hung in the participle. Hung. Hung as well. Next one. To aid. To aid in the past. Aided. Aided in the participle. Aided. Aided as well. Next one. To chuckle. To chuckle. Like that guy up there. He is chuckling. <laughs> that's that's what chuckling is. Very good. In the past. Chuckled. Chuckled. In the participle. Chuckled, chuckled as well. Last one. Last couple ones. To. To praise. To praise. In the past. Praised. Praised. In the participle. Praised. Praised as well. And last one. To cause. To cause. In the past. Caused. Caused. And in the participle. Caused. Caused as well. Very good. Many words there. I'm going to go through them real quick. Okay. So in Portuguese. Meadow é o bosque. Field é o campo. Hook é o gancho. Bucket é o balde. Twist é uma, uma torcida, quando você torce alguma coisa. Uh, reckless seria uma pessoa descuidada. Uh, portrait é um retrato. Dismissal é quando você manda embora. Stems é o caule. Suspicion é uma suspeita. Suspicious é uma pessoa suspeita, é o substantivo, é, é, o, ad, é o adjetivo, suspicion, substantivo, suspeito, suspeita, né? eu, tenho, eu tenho uma suspeita sobre isso, e suspicious é a pessoa suspeita, aquele cara é suspeito, aquela mulher é suspeita, very good, clumsy é uma pessoa atrapalhada, uma, é, handy é uma pessoa resolutiva, que consegue resolver tudo, uh, stroll, é uma caminhada. First aid, primeiros socorros. Extension é uma extensão ou ramal, quando a gente está falando de telefone. To prompt seria você incitar alguém a alguma coisa. To stroll é você dar uma caminhada, já que a gente viu stroll ali, que é a caminhada. Então, to stroll, caminhar. To muse é você contemplar, é você pensar sobre alguma coisa, você... É, Filosofar, I guess. To hang, você pendurar. To aid, ajudar. To chuckle, dar uma risadinha. Tá? Não é risada alta, é uma risadinha. Oh, excuse me. To praise, é você elogiar ou adorar, no sentido é, religioso. And to cause, causar. Alright, let's go on to talk time. Very good. Começando com a primeira pergunta, number one, is there a difference between chuckle and laugh? Like I said, chuckle is a small laugh, it's like, <laughs> and laugh is ha ha ha, right? That's the difference between chuckle and laugh. Number two, do you enjoy strolling through the fields and meadows? We don't really have a lot of fields and meadows here, I guess, I guess we have one meadow, a gente tem um bosque aqui em Natal, né? Yeah. Maybe if you like hiking, se você gostar de trilha, talvez. Uh, number three, do you sometimes sit and muse on the events of the past? E aí? I, I, eu acho que eu faço isso às vezes. Sometimes I do. You just think about things you have done in the past. I, I like to do that, to think about things I have done. Uh, number four, do you like stories with an odd twist at the end? What is a twist in a story? Some people might already know this. Talvez alguns de vocês já saibam que um twist, na verdade, é quando você tem uma, uma reviravolta. A história está indo de um jeito e ela... Opa! Não era isso que você estava pensando. Isso é um twist. É um odd twist. I, I, sometimes I do. Sometimes I like stories with a twist at the end. Not all of them, but mostly... Yeah! Number five. Do you always keep a first aid kit handy? Olha a palavrinha handy aí. Nesse caso, a gente está falando de útil. Ou como a gente fala em português, às vezes, fácil. Né? Você está precisando de uma coisa. Ah, você tem uma caneta aí fácil. Você tem um kit de primeiros socorros aí fácil. Né? De fácil acesso. That can also be handy. Ok? Next one we have. 
Uh, number six. Have you been fined by reckless driving? Você já foi é, multado por direção descuidada? Hmm. I don't think I've, that's ever happened to me. Uh, number seven. Are you very prompt in answering your emails? A gente tinha o too prompt, que é o verbo lá em cima, incitar, mas a gente tem também o é, adjetivo prompt. Uma pessoa pode ser prompt. E é uma pessoa que faz tudo prontamente, uma pessoa que está, é, que está disponível e que faz as coisas assim que é necessário, ok? Então, are you very prompt? Você responde seus e-mails prontamente? Number eight, are you a clumsy cook? I don't think I am a clumsy cook, not that much, anyway. A clumsy cook, it's a person who cooks, but drops everything, who doesn't really take care of everything. That's a clumsy cook, tá? É uma pessoa, é um, é um cozinheiro descuidado, um cozinheiro atrapalhado. Number nine, what do you do when email attachments seem suspicious? I delete them. I don't ever download attachments from email. If you're still confused, attachments are anexos, ok? Nunca baixe anexos de e-mail que você não conhece. Talvez até de quem você conhece. Checa antes para saber se deveria ter um, email, um anexo no e-mail, tá, gente? This is important. Internet security. And number 10, do you think it's motivated to be praised for your efforts? Absolutely. I mean, you, you, we don't really make an effort for the praise, but motivation is good. Being recognized, if we see that someone sees what we're doing, uh, sometimes we get a little bit of extra motivation to do a little bit more. So, not necessarily be praised. I don't need to be praised. Eu não preciso ser elogiado. But sometimes it's good to know people notice, que as pessoas not, notam que a gente está fazendo algo. Right? Very well. Let's go on to useful expressions. Então, prestando atenção aí, a partir da primeira, a gente tem fishy. What is something fishy? Fishy is something suspicious. Like in the sentence, in the book, I thought there was something fishy about the accident. Eu achei que tinha algo suspeito no acidente, sobre esse acidente aí. Ah, então, fishy, suspeito. Hum, é porque não cheira bem. Peixe não cheira bem. Então, é, tem alguma coisa aí que não cheira bem. It's fishy. All right. Next one we have to make ends meet. Então, to make ends meet. And são os finais. Né? Então, as pontas de alguma coisa. Meet, se encontrar. Né? Então, seria o quê? Juntar as pontas? O que, que é isso aí? Né? Seria exatamente isso, tá certo, gente? É quando, ó, vamos ver a frase. Things are so expensive that it's very difficult to make ends meet. Tá? Tá difícil juntar as pontas. Tá difícil é, chegar ao final do mês com algum dinheiro. Especially during the pandemic. Right? So it's hard to make ends meet. Tá difícil segurar as pontas. Ok? Moving on to money talks. What does it mean, money talks? Money talks... We're talking, it's precisely what it says. O dinheiro fala. Let's see it in a sentence. Money talks. Give them something extra and they will help you. Right? So if you want someone to do something for you and they sometimes don't want to, give them a little money. This is a little concerning. Porque é uma lição que nem todo mundo deveria estar tá utilizando na vida. Nem sempre a gente resolve tudo com dinheiro, né gente? Mas, I guess... If you pay someone, they will do things for you. And to kick the bucket, this is extremely important. People confuse this because in Portuguese, chutar o balde, to kick the bucket, means something else, right? We are not talking about uh, actually kicking a bucket. A gente não está falando de chutar um balde de verdade. And in Portuguese, uh, chutar o balde significa você não liga mais, chutar o pé da barraca, né? Você... É, fazer o que você quer fazer, é, acabar com a situação. In English, it means to die. To kick the bucket means dying. So in that sentence, he knew the secret, but he kicked the bucket before telling it. Ele sabia do segredo, mas morreu, chutou o balde antes de contar. Ok? Isso aí a gente vê em várias cenas antigamente no pica-pau, por exemplo. O pica-pau tinha uma cena em que ele morria, aparecia um baldezinho e ele... Tum! 
dava aquele chute no balde, tá? Porque é, ele morreu, ok? Então, in English, kick the bucket, chutar o balde. E existe, inclusive, uma expressão, olha só, chamada de bucket list, tá? Então, a gente tem uma bucket list. O que, que seria a bucket list, a lista do balde? Como eu falei, chutar o balde pode significar morrer. Então, no caso de uma bucket list, o que você está falando é a sua lista de coisas que você gostaria de fazer antes de morrer. Ok? Então, isso é a sua bucket list. All right. Uh, let's move on to... O okay, quê? Qual é a próxima agora? Não sei se vocês lembram lá na edição 21. A gente vai agora ver o Grammar File. We're going to be talking about the subjunctive. What is the subjunctive? So, subjunctive is, as in Portuguese, we say subjuntivo. O que, que é o subjuntivo? É quando você tem é, um verbo que é uma sugestão ou que é uma situação que talvez aconteça. Ok? Vamos ver essa tradução aí que fica mais claro, ok? Então, vamos lá. I suggest that he study. Eu sugiro que ele estude. Tá? Então, esse estude aí que é o subjuntivo. Okay? Is it essential that we be here? É essencial que nós estejamos aqui? I recommend that you join the committee. Eu recomendo que você entre para o comitê. I insist that Tom not be at the meeting. Eu insisto que o Tom não esteja na reunião. Tá? Então, a forma do subjuntivo em português é muito parecido com o imperativo. E eu não sei se vocês lembram, mas o imperativo em inglês também é apenas o nome do verbo, sem o to. Ok? Então, quando a gente tem ó, study, é a mesma coisa do to study, sem o to. Uh, o be, to be, sem o to. Ok? Então, é assim que a gente escreve o subjuntivo. Aí aqui a gente tem as diferenças aqui em cima. Vamos dar uma olhada. Então a gente tem aí, you try to, uh, to study often. Você tenta estudar frequentemente. E aí, quando a gente põe o subjuntivo, it's important you try to study often. É importante que você tente estudar frequentemente. Ok? He tries to study often. Ele tenta estudar frequentemente. It is important that he try to study often. Aqui a gente está mostrando que, olha lá, o he tries. Lembra que quando a gente tem o he e o she, a gente vai estar tá usando o verbo com o s no final. Né? Mas, quando a gente coloca no subjuntivo, tá vendo try aqui em cima, a gente não coloca o s tá? It's important that he try to study often. Ok? Porque a gente não está dizendo que ele é importante que ele estuda. É importante que ele estude, tá? É um outro caso desse verbo e por isso que ele tem essa formazinha aí especial, tá? Que é, inclusive, até mais fácil. É a forma do verbo sem o to, ok? E quando é que eu vou usar esses negócios? Aí ah, no livro tem, do jeito que tá aqui e tá? tal. Então, a gente tem vários, é, várias opções aí onde a gente iria usar o subjuntivo, tá? So, to advise, quando você dá um conselho, to ask, quando você pede, to command, quando você dá uma ordem, to desire, você deseja, to insist, quando você insiste em alguma coisa, como diz ali nosso amigo uh, DiCaprio em Django, I insist, né? Ele insiste que você aceite, right? To propose, você propor algo, to recommend, você recomendar, to request, você é, fazer uma requisição, um pedido, to suggest, sugerir. E todos esses, é, todos esses, essas outras opções que estão aqui do lado, tá? Então, it is best, é melhor, it is desirable, é desejável, it is essential, é essencial, it is important, é importante, it is recommended, it is urgent, it is vital, it is a good idea, and it is a bad idea. Todas essas aí, opções aí que você vai usar o subjuntivo, tá? Uh, por exemplo, it is vital, it is vital that we take care of our planet, tá? É vital que nós tomemos cuidado do nosso planeta, ok? Sacaram aí subjuntivo? Qualquer pergunta é só é, perguntar lá no grupo para mim, ok? Moving on, we go on to follow along with your book. Então vamos lá, to speak up, vamos prestar atenção, repetindo comigo, ok? 
para a gente poder ouvir e falar juntinhos aí para a gente poder treinar essa pronúncia. Let's go! Book 3, Lesson 22, Speak Up. Did he tell the secret? Did he tell the secret? He kicked the bucket before telling the secret. He kicked the bucket without before telling the secret. Where do you usually go on a stroll? Where do you usually go on a stroll? We usually go on a stroll in the park. We usually go on a stroll in the park. Can we trust his transactions? Can we trust his transactions? Let's view his transactions with suspicion. Let's view his transactions with suspicion. Who did she suspect? Who did she suspect? She was suspicious of her husband's attitudes. She was suspicious of her husband's attitudes. He resigned. He resigned. Don't you think his dismissal seems a little fishy? Don't you think his dismissal is a little fishy? In this case here, dismissal means to be fired. Tá? A gente pode usar dismissal, tá? essa demissão. Tá? Pode ser, nesse caso, uma demissão. Moving on. Would a dictionary help? Would a dictionary help? I recommend you always have a good dictionary handy. I recommend you always have a good dictionary handy. I've been spending more than I earn. I've been spending more than I earn. Eu tenho gasto mais do que eu ganho. Wow. Avoid reckless expenditure. Avoid reckless expenditure. Evite gastos desnecessários, gastos descuidados. Did you like her singing? Did you like her singing? His singing was somewhat clumsy. Her singing was somewhat clumsy. Ela cantou meio atrapalhada. Do children always obey? Do children always obey? Children are not always prompt to obey. Children are not always prompt to obey. He was so generous. He was so generous. What prompted him to be so generous? What prompted him to be so generous? Does the flower have a long stem? Does the flower have a long stem? The flower has a long stem. The flower has a long stem. What made you chuckle? What made you chuckle? Her funny joke made me chuckle. Her funny joke made me chuckle. What do you like to muse about? What do you like to muse about? I like to muse about old memories. I like to muse about old memories. What did the guest praise? What did the guests praise? The guest praised his meal. The guests prayed, praised his meal. Where can I hang the coat? Where can I hang the coat? Hang your coat on that hook. Hang your coat on that hook. What caused the plants to die? What caused the plants to die? The cold weather caused the plants to die. The cold weather caused the plants to die. Very good. Let's go on to uh, next page, listening and talking. A gente tem uma história aí, the acorn and the pumpkin. Então, prestem atenção. Vamos ouvindo juntos aí, tá? Para pegar a moral da história, ok? Let's go! One, two, three. Book three. Lesson 22. Listening and talking. The acorn and the pumpkin. There is an old poem that tells the story of a philosopher who is walking through a meadow. As he strolled along meditating on nature, he came upon a field of golden pumpkins. In the corner of the field, there stood a majestic oak tree. The philosopher sat down under the oak and began to muse about the strange twist in nature. Tiny acorns hung on huge branches and huge pumpkins grown on tiny stems. He thought, what was God thinking about when he put the small acorns on huge branches and the large pumpkins on the tiny vines? If I could give a hand to nature, I'd put the small acorns on tiny stems and the large pumpkins on huge branches. Weary, 
he decided to rest beneath the oak tree and soon fell asleep. A short while later, he was awakened by a tiny acorn which fell off from the tree upon his nose. Chuckling to himself, he amended his previous thought. What God does is done well. For sure, he is much wiser than me. So praising God for his wisdom in all things, he took his way home. Very well. Uh, so we have a story there of uh, the acorn and the pumpkin. If you uh, manage to understand the story, it's the story of a guy who thinks pumpkins should be grown on big trees and acorns should be grown on tiny stems. No cowly pequenininho. Right? And what is the problem with that? Well, let's pay attention. In case you don't know what, a, what an acorn is, there you go. This right here is an acorn. Okay? This is what an acorn is. It, it's, a, it's a type of dry fruit. Uh, I think in Portuguese we call it bolota. Right? This is an acorn. And pumpkins are big pumpkins are bobras, right? And what happens? He lay down a little bit to rest and an acorn fell on his head. And then he thought again and he uh, thought a little better and he said, well, God is wiser than me. Can you imagine if big pumpkins were on big trees and when they fell? Can you guess if a pumpkin fell on his head? Yeah, it's a good thing it was an acorn. So here I have a question for you guys. Uh, what God does is well done. O que Deus faz é bem feito. Do you agree with that? Do you think there are there is nothing wrong in nature and that everything fits perfectly? I'll leave that one for you guys. Moving on to talk time. We have five more questions there. Number one, why is nature conservancy important for future generations? So come on guys, why should we take care of nature? Well, because if we don't take care of our planet, it won't be there in the future, right? Uh, I mean, we need our planet to live. Number two, what are some environmental problems we have nowadays. All of that stuff from warm-up. We have pollution, we have uh, global warming, uh, so many things that are wrong and we need to take care of. Number three, what actions should be taken to protect the environment? Well, there are many things. For one, uh, we need to take better care of our livestock, that is pecuaria right it's one of the biggest contributors to um to the to global warming i don't know if you guys knew this but uh livestock is one of the biggest contributors to global warming i am not a vegan não sou vegano gente mas a pecuária é um dos maiores é, contribuidores para o efeito estufa para o aquecimento global ok então existem coisas que a gente pode estar fazendo melhor uh, like avoiding Uh, wasting meat, a gente, a gente uh, desperdiça muita carne no mundo, e um, um, I guess a better management of all these resources would help a lot. Number four, what problems do you think deforestation can cause? A lot of problems. We need the animals, we need the trees to, to clean the air, we need the trees to regulate humidity of the air. Without the trees, we don't have the rain. I mean, in Brazil, we have the rainforest. The Amazon is known as the rainforest. Without it, we will have less rain. Our planet would be dry, just like the Sahara. Did you know that? And number five, what do you do to save water? What could people do to save more water in the future? I mean, there are many things, right? Uh, we can... Uh, Use better shower heads so that we don't waste that much uh, water with showers. We can uh, not leave the sink on for too long. Uh, there are many things we can do to save water. All right, all right. Uh, let's go on to listening and reading practice. So paying attention there, listening and reading practice. We love English. So let's see this conversation 
and see if we can understand what is going on there. Listening and reading practice. One second here, let me pull it up and play. Let's play. Book three, lesson 22, listening and reading practice. Why do you think so many people around the world are trying to speak English? I'll give you a few reasons. First, there are over 50 countries where English is the official language. It is useful for business and traveling, and it allows you to interact with many new people. There are over 500 million speakers of English as a foreign language. Amazing! That helps encourage more and more people to learn English. English is the most commonly taught foreign language. More than a billion people are in the process of learning English. And did you know that more than 80% of home pages on the web are in English? I didn't. Can you imagine surfing on the web without understanding English? Wow. Yeah, so a lot of numbers there. We have over 50 countries where English is the official language. It is more than that. I think it's around 70 these days. Uh, and there are over 500 million speakers of English as a foreign language. That number has also grown. I think we are, uh, I think we are double that these days, around 1 billion. And uh, she says that uh, more than 80% of home pages on the web are in English. That unfortunately has dropped a little. So these days it's about 50 to 60%. Uh, but still, that still brings the question. Can you imagine surfing on the internet without English? So I don't know if you guys know this, but pay attention. So over 50% of the internet is in English, meaning that of all the internet, 50 to 60% is in English. It doesn't mean that the rest, that the other 50 or 40% is in Portuguese. It's in all the other languages. So by getting to know English, you are getting access to more, to 50% more of the internet and things that you would not have access with just Portuguese. That is what it means. 50% of the internet is in English. All right. Very well. Let's go on to fun time. We have a few more uh, questions here for you guys. Number one. We have number one right there. When is the Earth Day celebrated? And it's celebrated on April 22nd. It was right in the beginning of our uh, online content. Number two about how many billion people are there in the world do you guys know if you want to pause to check to check pause now the answer is we have 7.8 billion people in the world we are almost to 8 billion uh, next question number three how much of the earth's surface is covered by water approximately approximately 71%, 71% of the earth is water. Did you guys know that? Question number four, uh, when is estimated that the Arctic ice will may completely disappear? 2040. By 2040, by the year 2040, we are expecting all of the ice to melt from the Arctic pole. That is scary. In 20 years, we might not have an Arctic Pole anymore, a North Pole anymore. Uh, number five, what percentage, what, what percentage, excuse me, <laughs> sorry, what percentage of the world is, uh, has no access to electricity? What percentage of the world has no access to electricity? So, according to my research, uh, about 13% of the world do not have access to electricity. That means that if you have 10 friends, it could be very well possible that one of them does not have access to electricity. Maybe it's not your friends, but a lot of people in this earth don't still have access to electricity. How crazy is that? And over 40% uh, don't have access to uh, internet. 
going on to question six, how many liters of water do people need every day for drinking cookie and hygiene? So usually we, we're supposed to drink or cook or use water every day about two liters. That's how much we should be uh, drinking or eating or water a day. And number seven, how much has the surface temperature of the Earth gone by in the last 100 years? Uh, so this is a scary question because in the last few thousand years, our temperature has actually been going down. But over the last 100 years, it began going up. So it's been up by uh, an average of 0.8 celsius and it's been going even further than that in the last 10 years so it's a scary thought because we started making our world hotter and while one uh, degree it's not that much it can mean a lot for animals and plants and all other kinds of life okay so let's take care of the planet right guys very well let's go on to listening for understanding where we have mr eduardo he is calling his boss to see to tell his boss he can't go to work let's listen and write down there why eduardo will miss work paying attention book three lesson 22 listening for understanding eduardo is an employee he phones his boss and tell him he will have to miss work next Friday. Listen and write down the reason why he will miss. I hope you understand, Mr. Wilson. My dog is having puppies and I need to help her. Wow. <laughs> that was quick. Let's see if we can hear that again. Okay, here we go. Listen and write down the reason why he will miss. I hope you understand, Mr. Wilson. I hope you understand, Mr. Wilson. My dog is having puppies and I need to help her. My dog is having puppies. Minha cadela vai ter filhotinhos. And I need to help her. E eu preciso ajudá-la. Well, do you guys think this is a valid excuse to miss work? Maybe. I guess you could just call someone and help your dog. I don't know. Well, it depends on what you think. Let me know what you guys think later in our group. Okay. So he's missing work because he's helping his dog have puppies. Let's review real quick, guys. Today we saw warm up, words in action, talk time, useful expressions, grammar file, and speak up. And listening and talking, talk time, listening, reading practice, fun time, and listening for understanding. Uh, next time, next Saturday, we'll go on to lesson 23, Always Young. And then we'll see a little bit about, it's a little bit about beauty and taking care of your body. Uh, I, I like that lesson. We'll check it out. Uh, just a few reminders. Uh, stay tuned to the instructions from Sahia. Remember to do your homework because it will count as attendance. Uh, já que vocês tinham, vinham fazendo o homework virtual, Tá, gente? É, a partir de agora eu vou pedir que vocês façam a atividade de casa comum. Tá? Vocês vão fazer no livro, tirar uma foto e enviar para o pessoal do CRA, tá? para a Ismênia que está aí no grupo da gente. Alright? So remember to do your homework. Keep doing your homework. It counts as attendance. Alright? This is it for today. Uh, eu me despeço. I'll see you guys next Saturday. Have a great weekend. Have a great week. Remember to do your homework, and I will see you guys next time. Have a great one. This is Mr. Victor signing out. Bye-bye.